Alright. Alright, so the last thing I want to show you is how, so it, you want it to behave like a really good robot. You want it to turn itself on automatically and turn itself off automatically. The problem with this QDA is that it doesn't have like a true divert valve. So you'll notice, you get this error all the time. If the gas dies, like if you run out of nitrogen gas to the QDA mass spectrometer, it will put a stop flow on your pumps and that's to protect itself from getting flooded because there's no real valve. On a real expensive mass spectrometer, you have a divert valve. So if it kills the gas, instead of your source getting flooded, it just flips the valve to the waste position and then you can run to waste. But the column managers don't have a waste port dedicated. So you can't really, you have to dedicate a whole channel just to that and then switch it with the manual, it's impossible. So there's no real valve on this system. So because of that, they do this stop flow thing, which is incredibly annoying. Okay. That makes it difficult to turn the instrument on and off properly um, because you have to do things in the correct order. So I actually had to get on the phone with Waters engineers and set up these, these how to do these batch uh, startup and shutdowns. So in the bottom right corner here, you can see I'm clicking on the only batch shutdown enabled button-ish thing there, title, and that opens up this configuration window. So right now I tell it to use the startup LCMS ACE program when it starts the instrument, and then use the shutdown ESI ACE program when it shuts down the instrument. And after a run, you want it to wait 15 minutes. So you're not turning the thing off and on again. You have 15 or 20 minutes or 30 minutes or the whole class, it doesn't matter, um, until the instrument turns itself off automatically. And uh, I also like to uh, get rid of all the configure error on shutdown things. So I, I just leave, I just let the system turn itself off after 15 minutes. You can make ex external tell to turn off immediately if there's another error, but I, I don't do that. I'm going to be around, so I figure I can go ahead and address the errors without the instrument doing it. Uh, the other button you always want to have checked is this optimize button. I don't know why they even have it exist. It should just be always checked. Make sure the optimize button is checked, otherwise it will not use any of your custom setup stuff. Okay. So now let's go through auto control tasks. So you're going to go to file and you're going to open. We're going to do my startup first. We're going to open up my startup MS LC Ace, and then we're going to look at the auto control tasks. And you can see this is the order of events that I have going on. Okay. So UV lamp on first with a 10 second pre-delay. Takes a long time for the lamp to turn on, so you might as well do it first. Then at time zero. I'm going to tell it to turn the source gas on. I'm also going to tell it to turn the instrument on as soon as it turns the source gas on. So they're both at time zero, but it's going to do this in order. So it's going to do source gas on, then turn the instrument into operate. Then five seconds later, you don't want to do it too close, it's going to turn the pump on. So then the liquid's going to start flowing the mass spec. And so if you do it at about five seconds later in the post delay, uh, then you won't trigger that stop flow error. Uh, you got to wait a little bit of time for the electronics to realize that it's got the gas on before you can turn the pump on. So that's what we're doing there. Okay. So now the shutdown. The shutdown is going to be the reverse order. So now we're doing the shutdown, ESI, and ACE. Auto control tasks. Okay, so again, we're turning the lamp off now, not on. Lamp off five seconds before everything else. 10 seconds before everything else. I guess those are out of order. We probably, I probably should have done that the other way. Uh, the LC pump will turn itself off, so turn the pump off first. Then you're going to tune file, there's this mass spec shutdown tune file that a lot of people like to put in there. Uh, so that just kind of turns it to the shutdown tune file there. Gas turned off 10 seconds post delay, so you're getting a 10, 20 second delay between the pump being turned off and the gas being turned off. Standby is at zero, and then reset. You have to put the reset in at a 5 seconds post delay. I don't know why. I don't know why any of this is. But this is what worked. So use this. So if you have all these things activated and set up properly, you just need to come over to an instrument. If the instrument says not ready and is red, you can just come over to the instrument, write out everything as it needs to go, put your samples in the right position, and then just hit play and put it into the queue. And then you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, it'll say running startup. And it will turn itself on in the proper order so nobody messes up. And then at the, after a run it finishes, you'll see a, sh uh, a countdown clock. The countdown clock will be counting down from 15 minutes or 20 minutes where you put it at, and that will tell you when the instrument's going to turn itself off, and it will automatically turn itself off. The only time you ever encounter problems is if you try to submit a run during the shutdown cycle. Very rarely happens, but it could happen. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you do that, you'll make it so your system has a lot 
fewer stop flow errors uh, than doing it manually. So uh, typically I'd recommend using this uh, turn on, turn off automatic method.